pray. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have brought us safely through another night into a new day and into a new week. And now we open our hearts and minds to your spirit, that by coming and worshiping you at this hour, the words that we sing, the words that are read, and the word that is heard, as well as our reflections, we ask that all of these go together to help us then as we leave this place today, help us to meet the challenges that we face today and through the coming week. We ask and pray in the name of Christ our Lord who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks and ask that you receive these blessings that have been bestowed upon us and return to your care, that they be used by the church here to help those who are in need and continue in proclaiming the witness of your love. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our responsive reading is in the back of your hymnal on page 753. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all God's benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love toward those who are faithful. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for the faithful. As for mortals, their days are like grass, they flourish like a flower of the field. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who are faithful and God's righteousness to the children's children. seated please. I do welcome all of you here this morning and those who are joining us online today. Um, I've had uh, dealings with a cold and sinus problems all week so it's uh, been good to get out today but uh, I'm a little still a little <laughs> not with it yet but uh, hopefully it'll be a better week. Um, 
There uh, is a sign-up sheet, I believe, for a uh, March 3rd, the uh, World Day of Prayer service. Uh, there, the ladies uh, of the church, the women of the church, are asking uh, that uh, you sign up uh, because there is a dinner at 6 p.m., baked potato and salad dinner. Uh, this is what we used to do and uh, trying to get back to, to some normalcy again. And so that would be very nice uh, to have as many as we can uh, to be here for that. The dinner will be in the fellowship hall. Uh, I know that uh, there's a, a special speaker. Jeanette's uh, uh, sister, I believe, is is, uh, is is the speaker this year. And uh, so uh, uh, it'll all be about prayer. And uh, it should be a very good program. So please uh, hope that you'll sign up for that and share that information with friends of yours as well. The season of Lent begins this week on, on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We don't have an Ash Wednesday service, but maybe you've seen the signs on other churches. The, I see the Methodist Church up the road has an Ash Wednesday service uh, up at Providence. Uh, it begins our 40 days of, of Lent uh, when it's time to reflect in our lives about where God is and what God is doing in our lives. Uh, several years ago, when, when this closet up here was being cleaned out, this was one of the things that was in it. Uh, and, uh, and so it's been sitting in my office uh, waiting, and uh, I decided, uh, with Mike's help, we, we got it put on a stand. The flower stand is from the church uh, and, and Walters. Uh, it was one of the part of the furniture that, that came from that church. And uh, so Mike has uh, enabled it to be placed in the stand, and... Uh, it will be lit on Easter. It's called a Paschal candle. The history of such is in the days of Constantine, who, of course, through the empire, the Roman Empire, established the Christian church. On the night before Easter, because Easter actually starts at sundown on Saturday evening, so they would light, he would have pillars of candles throughout all of Rome so that everybody would know the resurrection and they all would light these candles, huge candles. And uh, the uh, following year, because these candles would always be lit on Sunday to remind them of the presence of Christ, they would be used at the end of the year, were made all of, of wax, of course, and they would chop them up into smaller candles so that at the next Easter lighting of it, everybody would have their own candle to walk through the streets. And so it became a procession of lights or a night of light, reminding us that Christ is the light of the world. And so this year we're, we're going to represent that on Easter when we have our celebration. We will light the Christ candle, this Paschal candle, once again. So it's much like Advent. We wait to light that middle candle uh, on Christmas. And so this year we have essentially an Easter candle. There will be more in the newsletter so that you'll get uh, a little more familiar with that. Um, in your bulletin, of course, are those that we lift up in prayer today. I saw in the, in the news that uh, former President Carter is in hospice care, and we want to lift up his family and all that uh, they have done, his service to our country uh, and to the world, essentially. So we lift up them in prayer today. Um, as always, there are those issues. Turkey is still trying to recover. Over 30,000 died in the earthquake, and uh, such a tragic uh, loss of life. There are any number of countries and uh, nations uh, also in difficulties, always a challenge. But we have a God who cares and a God who loves and a God who does reach out through the lives of those who can help to be of help. So we give God thanks for that. Let us take a moment of silence before we have our prayer. Almighty and gracious God, this is the beginning of a new week, a day of celebration for indeed on that third day, which has become our Sabbath day, 
the Lord Jesus arose. And so we celebrate this day, the victory, a victory that is needed always in our own lives, in our community and in our world. We give you thanks that your love was so great that you gave us your son and is so enduring that you continue to fill the church and fill individuals with your spirit so that there is the power of your witness throughout the world. Gracious God, there are problems that were brought to this room today, issues in our own lives, challenges that each of us face, and we turn them over to your spirit, for indeed, life can be tough and challenging. We give you thanks for the joys of new members of families, new things to celebrate, for indeed, that is part of the life that you give to us. We give you thanks for the ways in which we can reach lives beyond the walls of this church with prayer and with our presence, with our assistance. We ask that you continue to lead us by your spirit in such ministry. We give you thanks, O God, also for our neighboring congregations so that together as they witness in their way and we in ours, the witness becomes one to the witness of your goodness and your love. For we do so in the name of Christ Jesus, and we pray in his name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and then 12 through 17, found on pages 846 and 847 in your pew Bible. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. That their light has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and, rain, and re relents from punishment, from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, leave the bridegroom, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? This is the word of the Lord.
The gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 6, and then moving over to verses 16 through 21. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. And then your father who sees what you what is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up yourselves, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. times like these you need an anchor be very sure be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock in times like these you need the Bible Times like these, oh, be not idle, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock in times like these. I have a Savior in times like these. I have an anchor, I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock, this rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your 
and grips the solid rock. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Sound the alarm, sound the alarm. In the days of Joel, they were a people wanting to be reestablished in relationship with their God. A God that they knew had done wonderful things. A God who had freed them from slavery. A God who brought them through the Red Sea, through the wilderness, and had brought them to this land of promise. But a God who now seems so distant. But they knew of a time, they'd heard of a time where the relationship was much closer and they didn't live fearful, they lived as victorious people. They were people of a promise, a promise that had come to fruition for them. But that was no more. They lived in apprehension. And they were awaiting then the word of the Lord. So Joel tells them, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. They were at that point where they were ready to hear. Now we know, hopefully, that there are alarms around us. Some things alarm us, some things don't alarm us. There are physical alarms that we, we hear. When I first years ago moved to Surrey County, back in the early 80s, serving a church over there, uh, one of the things that was on the counter in the kitchen was a warning that uh, said that should the nuclear power plant have a leak, a siren would go off. And I'm thinking, if I could hear the siren through my closed windows, because I didn't want to smell the hog trucks coming by, <laughs> and by the time I got out to that one highway, I'm not sure how good that warning would be. And I read recently they've decided not to use that sound warning anymore. I believe they're going to text us. So um, just so that you're aware, I don't know if it affects on this side of, of Surrey or not. But I don't see anybody just ready to be alarmed. We're used to it. We're used to it. How about the car alarms? Now, I live across the street from the high school. And it's rare a moment in the morning where I don't hear an alarm go off. And I don't doubt it's because some student has sat wrong and his key, is, he, his key fob is in his pocket and that alarm is going on and on. And in the high school, he's not hearing that. She's not hearing that. And eventually it goes away. And I can assure you, because no car from the police station has come, nobody was really concerned that there was a, somebody breaking into a car. We're used to hearing that alarm. The alarm comes most winters. Hasn't happened this year. Predictions of snow, which tells us all, be alarmed. Don't wait. Food line is short of milk and bread already, you know. Ten minutes later, the alarm was sounded. We're there. The doomsday clock I saw advertised recently to tell us when the world, how close we are to the ending of the world as we know it. We are seconds away, it seems. But I gotta tell you, through most of my life, that's how it seems to have been. And so I'm rather used to that alarm. So you know what Joel was facing? But he was saying, sound the alarm. Blow the trumpet in Zion, that big, Horn the, so far that when they blew it, people knew you're supposed to gather. He says, this is the time. Let's make it happen. Let's do it right now. But it isn't about the world. It's about their spirit. 
See, because no matter how bad the world gets and how that doomsday clock comes so close, we might destroy this world, but we're not going to destroy what God has in us. We are about the spiritual world. The world around us may collapse, but as long as the people of God are there, there is hope. There is victory. And Joel has to convince the people that you gather and let's turn our hearts to God. He says, rend not your garments. Rend your heart. Open up your heart. This is the moment. God is ready to hear you. Are you ready to hear God? Sound the alarm. They acknowledged their predicament. And they did indeed gather. And I don't doubt that lives were changed. All the prophets had bad endings to their lives. Not a one of them died from old age. Because the word of the prophet, although it sounds good, it's tough to deal with. And every one of the prophets died at the hands of believers. Prophets didn't do well. But that doesn't mean that the message was not good and right. It just was challenging. And we know it is challenging. Because every time we hear an alarm, maybe the first thought is, do I need to pay attention to that? And then what's my commitment to that? I called I called Shirley recently because I saw a truck and they were unloading stuff out of her house and I said, do I need to worry or are you there? <laughs> you know, should I be alarmed? She was there. It's okay. But that's the neighborhood. What about the world? Should we be alarmed? Yes. And who do we turn to? God, our faith, because that's where the power is, and an unrecognized power. Joel was trying to convince the people the same God who convinced Pharaoh to free them is the same God who could change their hearts and change their life and change their world. Same God, same power. Sound the alarm. Now in the gospel, Jesus is doing it in a different way. He's, this is from the Sermon on the Mount. He's gathered with 5,000 people. I've often wondered how the person at the back of the crowd ever heard the, the sermon. But in a show that I recently saw, a movie, as part of the Chosen series, it was interesting that they decided to figure this out. And Jesus was up front, and the disciples were at different points, and they would repeat what was going on, word by word. But I can live with that. That's just one of those side things I've always wondered about. I thought, okay, that has possibilities. Because I'm thinking, otherwise, it could be like in the Colosseum where the sound might travel. But you're talking about the mountainside. It's hard to know. Nonetheless, Jesus is giving that same message, but in a different way. He is saying it's time to be alarmed, but there's no blowing of the horn. There's no ripping your clothes either. He's saying, look, you know what you need. Now go to a place privately and pray and fast and reflect and listen for God. And he says, because what he's seen and what they have had experienced is that they'll put it on their religious leaders. And yes, they will have these holidays and these celebrations and the horn will be blown and they will gather and the priest will be in their beautiful robes and they will have these long liturgies and everybody will sing these psalms and hymns of praises and go home to their daily lives. Jesus is saying, when you leave this mountain, just go to a quiet place and listen for God. Now, after the sermon, if you read on, that's exactly what Jesus did. He sent the disciples on a boat, but 
he went to a quiet place to pray. Didn't do it publicly. There's no recording of what he prayed about. And in fact, I think that's why the disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Because they weren't hearing him. They knew he'd go off to pray. But what should we be doing? Secretly respond. It's time to fast. The ancient rituals were good and they were great. And they still are in our church. All the things that we do, our order of worship, our symbols of the Christian faith, these are all good and useful. And I would say that fasting would be good for us, but I'm not setting a good example of fasting. Anything that could help us to reflect less on the world and reflect upon God and our ability to hear, that's where change happens. Now, the modern rituals that we have, those who may not be necessarily, they're, they're Christian, they're religious, they're not institutional, meaning they don't really like to go to church, but they go to the gym. I see them with earphones all the time. They must be reflecting in something, I'm sure. They see me in mine, I've been going to a gym lately, and, and I listen to the even song from Canterbury Cathedral. <laughs> they have an even song every evening, and it's about 48 minutes long, and that's how long I'm on the treadmill. I'm reflecting. I'm praying. And the whole world's going around me, but that's my time. And I feel better for it. Modern rituals that we have. I love it. My mom, every now and then, will talk about that we'll be doing something, and she'll say, it's time for some comfort food. Do you have comfort food? You know? Our comfort food growing up was give us some fresh made bread, some butter on it, and a soda, and we're good to go for lunch. <laughs> Just we'll make it to dinner time. Comfort food, rice and beans and ham or something, you know, comfort food. Something that we can sit down. That was the thing about family dinners growing up in my house, the family dinners were a moment in which we gathered and we reflected upon everybody's day and what we did and what we were going to do as a family. And Jesus is using the same thing. Because at the same mountain, he later feeds them. But he's feeding them this as a family, saying it's not the outward signs, but what is going on within us? Respond. It may not be in fasting. It may not be in some ritual prayer, but just take time to go in a place that it's just you and God and reflect. Sound the alarm. Secretly respond. And Jesus says, because most of all, you want to secure your treasure. Secure your treasure. In a place that where it cannot be stolen, rust, or decay, it's got to be then something that cannot rust or decay. When I first moved to Florida, one thing, I, well, two things I discovered. If you're going to buy a pound bag of M&Ms, you do that last on your shopping trip because by the time you get home, it's melted and not in your mouth. <laughs> the other was, it is damp there. And you may think you have something in the closet stored, but then you get this smell, and all of a sudden you go in there and it's got all this mold and mildew, and it's a constant battle. Protecting treasures was one of those issues. How do I, how do I sort? And, and at that point, I think I became less of a clutter person, less of a hoarder, <laughs> because it just was too much to try to keep clean. Jesus is saying, secure what is your treasure. And what your treasure isn't that which we hold in the world, but what God has done and what God can do for us if we open our hearts, if we hear the sound and respond to the alarm. 
Maybe you sang as I did as a young child. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. That's the treasure. It's what's going on inside. That's the treasure. That's the promise. And the Christian faith is not gaining about gaining celebrity status for the church. Constantine, the emperor, was great in making it a, a empire religion. But we can see that it had some benefits, but it didn't really do everything maybe the Lord had expected. It became very ritualistic, and it left a lot of people behind. They forgot what the treasure was. But the treasure is still that relationship between us and God. Jesus is reminding us that in prayer and fasting and those things that were good, those things that will help us sit and listen, that is what it's about. And that's how we secure our treasure. So we listen for indeed the alarm in Zion is sounding. We don't need to respond in public display, only to remember to open up our hearts to what God may have for us. That the promise of God is the greatest treasure. And that promise of God is fulfilled. That treasure comes every Sunday when we remember the resurrection. But then when we have to gather at a time in which we say goodbye to someone, the treasure is not lost. It is fulfilled. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we give you thanks for this day and this hour and for the words that you share with us through your holy word. We thank you for the men and the women of faith in their testimony and their lives that brought us here today who have been witnesses to us. Continue to help us then to be witnesses that with open heart and mind and reflecting upon your goodness, we can help share the treasure that you have with those who have yet to realize the treasure and its value that you have for them. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Join with me in the affirmation of faith as in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now, those who are able, please rise for the benediction. And now, gracious God, may your presence continue to bless us and keep us. Sustain us through this week. Uphold us when we are low. Challenge us as needed. That we would be your servants each day, faithful in witness. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give what is best.
Let sorrow do its work. <laughs>